Prepare to be absolutely blown away today. The footage you're looking at right now of the adorable puppies playing in the snow is actually AI generated. Now I know what you're gonna say, we've seen stuff like this in the past, we've seen animations from DreamWorks or Pixar or Disney or whatever. However, the difference here is that those animations were created and generated by professionals in a studio for hours, days, weeks, even months. In this case, these puppies you're looking at right here, they've been generated in between one minute and one hour. And it didn't take a lot of modeling and analysis of actual dogs and snow and how they work together by human beings. It was just a prompt. Same as if you're using DALI or Midjourney or any other image generators. This is a text to video transformer. So somebody types in, generates a video of puppies playing in the snow. And within a couple of minutes, this video footage was generated. Today we're going to be talking about Sora, the latest model from OpenAI, the company that's given us ChatGPT and DALI. Late last week, a lot of footage has been released from this model to show us what the capabilities we can be expecting in the coming future. And today we're going to be diving through those videos to see how incredible this footage is. And if you're not convinced that this footage is actually AI generated, because of course they could have placed a bunch of videos that they made by hand on their websites, if you go on Twitter and search for Sama, which is Sam Altman's Twitter handle, you will see a lot of conversations from last week where he was accepting requests from people asking him to generate specific videos and then in the time span of 10 to 15 minutes he would come back with an actual video of whatever that person generated. So go to Twitter and check out those videos because it's pretty amazing what it's created. But now let's continue analyzing those videos and see what level we're looking at here. Because to be quite frank with you, I could not believe the quality of this footage. So here's some footage of a couple walking through a market in Tokyo in the winter and at first I wasn't even amazed because I was convinced that this is actual footage, that this is not AI in any way because it's just too good to be true. But then as I started analyzing you might see a couple of things which don't make sense. For example if you look at the size of the people and the market stalls on the right hand side the proportion is not right. Then if you look at the trees, some of the branches seem to be disconnected from the actual tree and the little fence at the very end of the footage, it doesn't seem to be proportionate to anything else. It seems very, very small. It's kind of like you wouldn't even have to jump over it. You, you could just step over it. So it doesn't really make physical sense here. But be frank, if you watch this footage without knowing it's AI, straight away as some kind of B-roll footage or something that's playing on the TV, would you actually realize that it's AI? because I honestly didn't the first time I saw it. Now here's a bit of footage from a distance of a natural landscape and because there is not so many objects in the frame it's really really hard to tell that this is AI generated. In fact I don't actually see that it is. You could, you could tell me that it's real footage and I would believe you. I don't, I honestly couldn't tell. Maybe if you looked at the waves, maybe there will be some sort of small giveaway that it's AI generated, but honestly, I can't tell. Here's another cute little video of a cat and a lady in bed. And again, extremely hard to tell that this is AI generated. Maybe there is a couple of imperfections in her skin, but that could be anything really. And if you look at the cat and the duvet and the texture of the bed frame behind, there's no real giveaway. It's only at the end of the video when the cat pulls out its paw and then it pulls out another left paw from underneath it. That's when you can start distinguishing that something doesn't make sense here and this might be AI generated because as you might know, hands, limbs, ears, and a couple of other things are huge giveaways that um, something is AI generated. If you generate something with DALI, which is the image generator, which we actually do have access to, you will see that there is problems with actually generating hands. But if you didn't really know what to look out for and you just saw this footage on TV in a commercial, you probably wouldn't realize this stuff. So it's kind of amazing. Another bit of drone footage. This is a Land Rover looking car driving through a dirt track from the perspective of a third person. And this video actually does look a little bit synthetic, but not because of the quality or the textures or anything like that. It's because of the actual third person view, which we have and which reminisces video games. So that's the one thing that kind of strikes me here. And maybe there's something strange going on in the front of the car at some points when it's turning left, but that's a very small thing. One thing to notice here is that even though we have this incredible model over here that generates any video you possibly could want, it still doesn't seem to actually render text correctly. I mean, we'll never know, but I feel like it actually wanted to say Land Rover on the back of it and it said something like Dandver, which is kind of funny if you consider 
the quality of this stuff and then that writing a piece of text is still such a challenge because for those of you who don't know but all those mid-journey and DALI image generators that we've discussed in the past they all have problems with writing even the simplest words they will always have some kind of typo in them so that might also be a giveaway of footage being actually generated by AI and we'll see a couple more examples in the future as well the next one is very cinematic in my opinion it's actually something that you might see on a Hollywood trailer and you wouldn't be surprised it's a man wearing a 1960s looking spacesuit and a red wool hat walking through some planet or desert and then sitting in some spacecraft and then doing something with some sort of equipment it's very professionally made and it would cost a lot of money to create in the real world whereas with AI it's just another hour or less to generate also pay attention to the face in my opinion it's completely photorealistic there's no giveaway that it's actually AI generated. There's nothing wrong about the photo or the still or the video itself. The, the hair is perfect, the facial hair looks natural. The hat is weird, of course, but apart from the hat being weird, the whole structure of his face, it looks perfect, honestly. If we're talking about humans, here's another video of a lady walking through a city in Asia and the movements of her body are natural. If we look closer at the face, it's very natural, you see some imperfections on her skin and her ear is absolutely natural. Everything makes sense, even, even the physics between objects on her face and her sunglasses and her lipstick and earrings and everything. The only way to see that it's AI generated to me is the way she walks. She kind of seems to be floating above the pavement at points and her walking speed is not in sync with the speed of her movement, if you know what I mean. And if you look at the characters in the background, some of them don't fully seem to behave naturally. A couple of things I wanted to mention about the model itself. Well, the first one, the bummer, is that it's not available to the public yet. It's still under development. And this footage that we're seeing here is still just a early media release from Sam Altman and OpenAI, but it's giving us some idea of what we can expect. And question is, how much is it gonna cost when is it going to be available and what will the limitations be? For one thing, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of limitations around safety of using Sora, um, similar to the ones that we saw in DALI 3, which is the image generating model that I've reviewed over there. So we probably won't be able to create footage of celebrities and politicians and any dangerous things, any sexualized things, any violence, all those kind of things. And this is great because as much as this tool is incredible and the footage is amazing, it might be very dangerous if it's used the wrong way. For example, consider spreading fake news using footage that you just created within a couple of minutes about some sort of political situation that's going on or some warfare related materials which is going to skew people's mindsets towards your beliefs. So right now this tool is actually in the hands of so-called red teamers and red teamers are basically domain experts in the areas of misinformation, hateful content and bias. So they're kind of quality checking it right now to make sure that we can't control it in the ways that OpenAI won't want us to. From the technical perspective, it seems like we're going to be able to generate up to 1080p content, which is full HD, up to one minute. But this again might all change. This is all very early stage information. We will be able to generate footage like you saw in the videos before. We will be able to animate images so you can input an image that you've created in whatever way and the model should be able to animate it. So for example, if you upload an image of a car on a street, you can probably make the car actually move and drive around the city. There will be a chance to interpolate two different videos together. So you'll have one video here, one video here, and they will merge together in some way where it makes physical sense. And I still want to show you a couple more videos from Sora because I just think they're incredible. And let's just get some popcorn and watch it together. But before we do that, I just want to show you what we had available to us last year in terms of image generation from OpenAI and what we have today. I mean, I know we don't have access to it yet, but it's gonna be out there very soon, I think. So DALI 2, is the previous model of the image generator I was telling you about. And last year at this point in February, we only had access to DALI 2. And these are a couple of images that it can generate. Look at the quality of that. Last year it was incredible. And I still think it is incredible that you can generate this kind of stuff, but there's no way that you would actually consider it to be a real photo. You can see that there's errors and mistakes in it and it doesn't really make physical sense a lot of the time. Whereas now, instead of just one frame, you have 
60 frames a second probably, times 60 seconds of footage, which is really photorealistic. I mean, the faces, the behaviors, everything is in place. There might be some errors here and there, but consider that this is probably the worst quality you'll see from this model. It's gonna constantly evolve. This is version 1.0. We're gonna see version two and three and four and 25 probably at some point. So even if it's not perfect now, it will be probably at some point in the future, which is great and at the same time a bit scary. And if you consider that there will be probably open source versions created by third party developers where you won't have all those limits, that might be a bit of a scary future. So Sora belongs to OpenAI, but there might be a version which is created by somebody else, which will allow you to actually generate footage of actual people and celebrities and politicians and all that. Let's see where that takes us, but for now, let's enjoy some more footage. With this video, I actually thought this was footage from uh, one of the first Harry Potter movies, but if you look at the wall at some points, it seems like the train is kind of sliding through the wall a little bit, but you really have to look deep into this one to see it. But other than that, again, pretty much perfect footage. I, I can't really say anything negative about it. Next one, and do pay attention to the hands, because as I told you, all those models seem to have problems with generating hands. So pay attention to what's going on with the hands of the people behind the birthday girl over here. Her face, completely natural. She's blowing out the candles. However, you don't actually see any interaction between the flames and her blowing out the flames. And if you look at the lady behind her and the way she's clapping, she's kind of doing like a weird single clap kind of thing. But I'm not convinced it doesn't seem like that's even physically possible. If you zoom back to the beginning of this video, the other lady is really finding it very difficult to clap. Something weird is going on there. And this actually has been flagged by OpenAI themselves on their website in the little examples that they've shown, where they do mention that the model, however great it is already, it might have some problems with interactions of objects in footage. So her blowing out the candles and the actual flame of the candles, they don't interact. So you would expect anything to happen to that. Even if she wasn't blowing very hard, you would still see some reaction from the flames themselves. So that's one giveaway. Let's move on to a close-up of this gentleman in, I believe, a train or a tram or some kind of public transport. Again, very hard to distinguish that this is AI. In fact, if I saw this on YouTube or on TV, I would be completely certain that this is actual footage of a man on a train, not some AI generated footage. Then let's get a little bit more artistic. And here we have something that reminds us more of Pixar. Here's a little kangaroo dancing. And this actually reminds us that we can generate whatever we want. Um, our imagination is the only limit here, as corny as it sounds, but we can have this kangaroo dancing in a shirt, then we can have an otter which is surfing on its board, and again, pay attention to the little badge that it has on its vest, that word otter is misspelled, which is funny because look at all the detail in the videos that I've shown you, and then you have the word otter which has a typo that an eight-year-old wouldn't make, so it's kind of mind-blowing to me. It's similar to what ChatGPT does, where it gives you incredible analysis of complex topics, and then if you ask it to add a couple of numbers together, it's probably gonna make a mistake. It's the imbalance here, where some extremely difficult tasks are that quick to make, and then something basic that any human being could do is too difficult for it. Anyways, enough shaming, let's move on to the next one. This is footage of another mistake that we see here. Look at how those wolves are kind of spawning out from behind each other. So we start off with, what, two or three, and then suddenly we have seven wolves in one place. They are very cute, so I can't really complain at this point. Then we have an artistic one with two pirate ships floating around, but in a coffee cup. So that's kind of cool. And again, incredible footage, honestly. Here's a man sitting on a cloud reading his book. Again, his face and his body really difficult to distinguish between reality and AI reality. But if you look at the way his hands interact with the pages of the book, there is something weird going on there. And probably you wouldn't see that on first glance, or if I didn't say this, but otherwise, yeah, it's kind of a giveaway that it's AI generated. Another artistic one, we have origami birds flying through a forest, an example of how you can actually come up with ideas and see how it would look like in real life. So if you wanted to create some kind of mock of, um, of a more realistic situation, instead of actually setting up all the cameras and getting expensive drones, you can, you can actually visualize what it would look like using this tool in the first place. And then if it looks all right, like, well, I mean, you can't really do origami birds, but I guess you could fold up a whole lot of paper planes and throw them out, and you could probably do something similar to this in real life. But this is such a great simulation to test out your ideas in the first place. This one is really cool because it looks like footage from a Western from 
I don't know, the 60s or 70s, even if you look at the grain of the video and the quality of it, it looks like it's a VHS special from decades ago. But look at the detail in the actual village. Like all the houses make sense in terms of the size between themselves. There's not one which is 20 times larger than the other one. It actually does understand the physics of the scenario that it's trying to build. So that is really, really incredible. Imagine all the B-roll footage that you could use if you're making YouTube videos like this one, where you could have any idea that you have in your head and create B-roll. Instead of actually recording things um, on your own, you can just generate that stuff using a simple prompt. That's gonna speed things up immensely. But then again, you do want to have that personal touch, right? Instead of just um, AI-generated imagery. But still, a lot of things that we can accomplish using both tools. And this last piece of footage is a construction site created by a drone and it looks pretty amazing but if you look deeper into the tracks of the actual forklift that we're zooming in on you'll see that at first it's just one driver then there are two people in the forklift then it actually drives over a bunch of pipes so it's not fully realistic here but it looks amazing if you're not picky as I am. So in conclusion this is Sora it's not out yet, so we can't really generate videos with it, but we can have a look at some example videos on the openai.com website. Or if you go on Twitter, there's tons of stuff out there, mostly generated by Sam Altman. So go ahead and check that out. So let's see in the near future how much this thing is going to actually cost us. Is it going to be openly available to you and me, for example? And let's see what kind of disruptions it's going to cause. I hope they're just positive. Anyways, this was Basil from Silicon Mind, and I will see you in the next episode very soon. Take care for now.